if you are like me, you spend way too much on AI. Maybe not this much, maybe on an extreme case. But when you're coding, like the, the fees rack up really quickly, especially when you're using like the Claude API. So in my month of December, 2024, I spent $375. When I saw that, I was like, I need to get my costs down. So you can't just do that right away because I need to kind of like figure out a plan to strategically lower my cost. And you may have followed some of my videos where I've talked about Google Gemini 2.0 Flash being like the value king. That has helped me substantially. You may have saw my video that I did where I made the prompt, like I overrode the prompt for root code to save money substantially. That has helped me a ton. So ending February 2025, this is what I spent. $75 in API cost. The big helpers here was using DeepSeek more and Gemini Flash 2.0 more because those were my big cost savings this month. And then I added Cursor in, which has also offloaded a lot of my API costs because now I'm moving a lot of my demand into Cursor. Cursor is so good. There's no way that price is going to stay $20 because of the value they're providing. I have a feeling in the future that's going to be $100 a month. I, I really do. So take advantage of Cursor at $20 a month while you can. I have no investment, no sponsorship by them, but the value they provide right now is incredible. And if it, they keep it at $20, I'll be a fan. I'll, I'll use it forever. But I don't see how they do that after using the APIs as much as I have. Now, Grok is my other big cost here, 40 bucks a month. I did pay for an entire year, so I think I actually got it like $38 a month. So I'm stuck with that for a year. But honestly, I really like it. Um, I use it for like image generation, just ideation, getting ideas for like YouTube titles because I suck at that stuff. I really enjoy that, what they've built there. And then I have my regular subscriptions with Anthropic, Google, and OpenAI, and GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot is also another one that's a really good value. So I need to get this lower. My goal being $100 a month, if I can. And that's where this comes in. So recently I posted that video on the shortened prompt, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit more, but that has substantially saved me API cost. I've been monitoring that. And I want to say it's about 50%. I believe I can get my API cost down to less than $50 for the month of April with the help of using DeepSeek, with using Gemini Flash 2.0, and by using my smaller prompt, all while still do being as effective as I've always been. I still have to pay for Grok. I've already paid for Grok technically, but I'm still extrapolating that out month by month. Cursor, I'm going to keep that. As long as that price doesn't go up substantially, I will be paying for Cursor. It's just too good. And the GitHub Copilot is also a substantial value. And you should use that while you can too, especially the agent version of that, because you do get access to Claude there too. I'm going to actually be able to save a substantial amount of money. Not quite the 100 but it would be if I wasn't paying the $40 a month for the Twitter premium or X premium account. And why did I choose Requesty? Well, actually, I'd never heard of Requesty. Uh, I had mainly used Open Router before. But anyway, I saw this, and this kind of struck me because I love companies that listen to their users. And, and I thought it was kind of cool that they made a change so quickly. Like within a day of me releasing that prompt, they added it so that their users can use it to save them money. It doesn't benefit this company. You know, they want more tokens to go through. But what they've done is they've added a built-in way to use my small code or my small code prompt to save their customers money. I love it. So I actually started digging into it a bit and then I started talking to them and I actually signed up. So I actually went and signed up myself. They gave me a $1 welcome credit, which you can kind of barely see here. And then a $5 bonus on my first $5. I think I put $10 in there. Maybe I think in general, I got the six free dollars and then I put some money in to get some free credit. So, I mean, at a minimum, you could try it out to get, the free credits there. Now I'm not sponsored by them at all, but when I was talking to them and told them I was using it, they did actually give me a few credits. So I think uh, they popped like $40 onto my credit balance, which I am very appreciative of, by the way, because any free credits is amazing, but they wanted me just to try it out and give them feedback on it. Now, the second reason I'm gonna go with Requesty, the first being, I love the community engagement there, the customer engagement there. The second reason is I'm a data nerd. I love being able to come in and see how I'm using 
these models. And you can see here, some of this is from tests I just ran that are actually more expensive than I should for this video, which I'm going to show you the results of. But anyway, this is a amazing breakdown to show you where you're actually spending your money. So for example, I did a lot with Quinn QWQ32B, you know, a little over a million tokens like sent out on that. And it was 45 cents. So highly recommend you checking it out. I won't talk too much more about it, but worth getting those free credits at a minimum now. And then some of you might ask, why don't I just use Cursor? Well, check this out. One day in, I don't know if this was a 30-day month or whatever, or a 31-day month, but I'm already 96 out of 500 of my fast credits. I use way too much to actually use Cursor full-time. I would if I could, but I can't. So I have to like balance my workload into GitHub Copilot, Cursor, and the API usage. I just have to with the amount of code that I'm doing. Now I want to go through how I actually code on a day-to-day -day basis. The thing I use a lot is the architect or ask mode in RuCode. If you're not familiar with RuCode, it is a VS extension that you can install within the extension marketplace. It's apparently an update I need to actually do. And it's really easy to get going. So and I'll show you kind of how to set it up a little bit, but I'm not, that's not the purpose of this video. I have other videos that kind of go through that. So this is one of my key things I use. Whenever I'm doing something big, in this case, oh, don't shoot me here. I'm, I'm actually kind of embarrassed of this file, uh, but this file has gotten too big. It's, nobody should have a 2000 line file, but it's just been kind of built up and crud put into it over time. So I, I need to break this file up. It, it's just gotten unruly. So here I have DeepSeek R1 go through and build a plan of the things that need to change. And then at this point, I can choose, do I want to switch to Claude to do the implementation and pay more? Or do I want to go to DeepSeek V3, which is what I would normally do, to do a first pass on it? Because DeepSeek V3, very cheap and very good. So I can do this for pennies, you know, probably 30 cents, I could have all of this implemented with the DeepSeek model. Whereas if I were to do this with Claude, it's probably going to be $2. And you have to make that choice for yourself. Do you want to spend that money on it? Or like, is it so complicated that you need the best model on it? Or can you do it with DeepSeek V3? In this case, I think the plan is so good that I could actually send this through DeepSeek V3 and it'd be totally fine. And then if it fails, I've maybe lost 50 cents, maybe 30 cents. And then I could always come back and do Claude if I need to. But if Claude fails, you're out dollars. And I know like it doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up on a monthly basis when you're doing dollars an hour of time. So let me give you a couple other examples here. So side by side, this left side, I use Claude 3.7 to actually plan and implement a fully functional 3D flight simulator. The output of it was broken. $3.34 to actually do that, broken. On the right side, I used DeepSeek R1 to plan and then Claw 3.7 to implement and it was also broken. But the code output for both are very close. They're slightly different and I feel like with a few iterations, I could get both of them working. So the question is, is it worth paying $3.34 or $1.12 to get a basically equally broken app. And this is where things get a little funny because the next thing I'm going to show you is this one. This one used DeepSeek R1 to plan, that same prompt, and then I used Claw 3.7 to implement, but I used my overridden prompt that I call coder short rules. Remember the price of the other two, $1.12 broken, $3.34 broken. Now I'm not saying my prompt makes things better. But in this particular case, 49 cents, we got pretty much all the same files we'd expect for 49 cents. And it is the most functional version of the game. I actually have a cool looking aircraft. It's got the heading and everything working. I don't think the speed's working. I was trying to get that working, but I could iterate on that now. The other two didn't even load. This is incredible. I'm, I cannot tell you enough how important it is to really like get control of your AI agents to save you money. Now these agents are built for like money is no limit.
But the fact of the matter is when you're using it every day, I can't spend dollars an hour using it. So having these overridden prompts and what I would love to see happen is people actually coming through and having like a library of these. Maybe we should start like a GitHub repository of these prompts that we're making that, that work with these particular tools. Because I think we could save each other a lot of headaches and a lot of money to show you how to actually override your prompts. If you go into your modes, so over here on the left is the modes. Code, architect, ask, and debug come with root code when you install it. I'm pretty sure debug does. I don't think I added that one. I've added the coder short rules one, and I've added the LM ask and the LM studio code one. Because these are like ones that I've made specifically for local models that I'm still tuning. I, mean, I haven't released those yet because I don't feel like they're great yet. And I have another one I'm working on for Gemma 3. So anyway, if, let's, if we go into coder short rules, I'm going to hit edit here, select the coder short rules. And if you scroll down, you can expand this advanced override system prompt and you can click on this little link right here. And this is how you override it. And just to verify it's working, you can hit the preview and to see uh, how this actually looks. You know, this is still a large prompt, but it is significantly less than the, the full prompt. I'm talking like 1 15th the size. It is crazy difference in size. So you, and you can tell that by the quality of the code we got and the cost of 49 cents. Now this used DeepSeek R1 to plan and Claude 3.7 to actually implement. So then Claude 3.7 didn't actually have to do the plan. So I saved tokens that way because I do not have a good like shortened to ask mode. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the different configurations. And this is what I think you should pay attention to as well. You should have many configurations and you should be switching between them based on the work you're doing. Now, I could have very much had DeepSeek V3 implement this and maybe got something 80% as good, 90% as good. And I would have paid even less than the 49 cents. But in this case, I use Claude just to show like the apples to apple comparison there. Your configuration should be the models you switch between the most. So I have Claw 3.7, one of my main models. I use this for anything complex, but it is expensive. I have that routed through Requesty rather than Open Router. That helps me get past their limits that they have, but it also helps me unify my spin that I have every month with one provider. Then I have my local models. So I only use these models when it's something very simple. You know, maybe I actually want to write like a particular unit test and I don't want to go pay any money for it. These don't cost me anything. I wish these would work better because I would love to move more of my workload to local, but I can do some of my stuff. And typically what this entails is me copy and pasting code from Ru code into the editor because I just turn off the tool editing to save tokens. And then I use this model a lot. This Quinn 2.5 VL because it has vision capabilities. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually use this to pull information from like a mock-up and then I'll feed that into something to implement it. Like DeepSeek V3 doesn't have vision capabilities, but I could use Quinn 2.5 VL to take an image, describe the parts of it that need to be built, and then put that into DeepSeek V3 to implement. And is it perfect? No, it's not going to be like Claude 3.5, but it does a pretty good job when you combine those two things together. And one of my favorite models for things is this Gemini Flash 2.0. This is the value king. I'm just going to click on this to show you my configuration. 10 cents per million input tokens, 40 cents per million output tokens. And again, I'm setting all this through requesting because my goal is by the end of this month, unify it all through there. And unless I have some major problems with them, I don't see me switching from that. And a couple other ones to maybe touch on. I do keep these miscellaneous ones. So for example, I wanted to test this Gemma 327B one. They had a free version on Open Router. And I just switched the model on this constantly. So it's not like a defined model configuration. It's some it's basically my free floater. And I do the same thing with requesty. I was using the QWQ32 billion parameter model here. And I keep misspelling requesty as requestly. So if you ever see me have the TLY, it is not TLY, it is requesty, just to be very clear there. I think I've got all my spelling corrected at this point. And then, of course, I have my DeepSeek R1, which I absolutely love R1. It is a killer model, especially for planning, architecting, that type of stuff. And DeepSeek V3 honestly gives Claw 3.5 a run for its money. Its issues really are that it doesn't support images, so I don't like to do it for mockups 
unless I combine it with that Quinn 2.5 VL model. The final model I'll touch on that I use is this Google Pro 2.0 because sometimes there are free models you can use. So if you really want to be smart with money, use some of these free ones. The ones that are like the experimental ones that they want people to use and they're not charging. Now they will be highly rate limited and you can configure that down below in Roo code. You can set the rate limit, like the minimum time between API requests. So I can say, I want it to be like 10 seconds. You can use these free models and not pay anything and get some pretty good results. So the one that I've been playing around with most lately is a Google 2.0 Pro Experimental, pretty good model. Again, it's so rate limited that I've had a hard time like staying with it, but you can do that with some of these models. You can use these free ones to save you cost. So I've gone on a lot now. Hopefully what I've, what I've gone over has been helpful for you. Basically my tips for you are switch models while coding. Do not just stay on a single model. Even if you are using cursor, if you're doing something simple, switch to a non-premium model to save you those credits. The second thing is override your system prompts in Roo code. Use those smaller prompts, especially if you don't need all the other functionality. Just note, if you were to take my prompt, it removes all of the MCP stuff out of there. There's a lot of stuff that's put into that prompt that's just not needed if you just want to do code, if you're just looking to get something written. And you saw that, how much it saved. We're talking $3.34 down to 40 cents, 49 cents. And we got a more functional version of the game. The next thing is cancel subscriptions and start consolidating into really one LLM router service, Requesty, for example. So you might ask, how do you actually still use it to like chat interface? Because you can't just use it through the AI tools. And that's a great question. So there's one other thing I'll close out with on this video, which is open web UI. So you can visit GitHub and grab open web UI. This is probably the best open source way to consolidate your models. It's incredibly easy to run either with Python or Docker. And ultimately I have it set up here and running. The way you can configure this to work with Requesty is you go to settings, you go to admin settings, you go to connections and basically put in the requesty URL here and your API key and you're done. So I've been testing it out to use this in place of like Claude.ai or chat.gpt.com. And you get access to all the models. They're all available. I even have my Olama ones hooked in here too. So this is ChatGPT 4.5, just to show you how this works. I've selected the open AI one here. So I'll run in through the requesty API key that I put in there. Amazing. It simplifies everything. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to be using open web UI to, as part of that consolidation. I'm actually going to try to deploy it. I've got a computer behind me over here. It needs to be upgraded, but I'm going to try to deploy it there and open it up to my entire house. So my kids can use it. My wife can use it. I want to get my wife using AI. If I can do that, we know we're winning. Anyway, I hopefully this has been helpful. And if it has, let me know in the comments below if there's something that you do different to save money while coding. I would love to know that as well. Also check out Requesty. You can get those six free, free credits. Again, I'm not sponsored by them. Although full transparency, they did give me some credits just to try out the service, but I've really come to like it. Help me out with the algorithm. Give me a like and subscribe. Otherwise guys, I appreciate you all. We've been having so much fun making uh, videos for this and the Discord channel is just amazing. I love conversing with all of you sharing ideas, sharing projects. It's just amazing. I've learned a lot from you guys too. So jump in if you want to join that community. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.